Hey again campers, it's Starbella from Union One Day Camp. Today we are going to make the rose window in Notre Dame. So here are some examples. This is my blank sheet of paper that I'm gonna use. So here's one, here's another, and then here is another one. So for this project today, what you're going to need is you're gonna need circles in various different sizes. I have one, two, three, four, and five, because we can use the outside of the tape and the inside, and then six and seven. So I've got lots of circles. I have a cup with some water in it. I have some paint brushes. I have my watercolor palette. I actually have two. I have this one, and this one has sparkles in it. And then I also have a ruler a black Sharpie, just regular Sharpie, you know, not fine. You can use fine um, tip if you want to, but I've just got the regular Sharpie and then a pencil. And so we're going to switch the camera really quick so you guys can like be on top and see what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Okay. See you in a minute campers. All right. Welcome back campers. We've changed our camera view. So here's our example again of the window, or the rose window from Notre Dame. If you guys didn't know, Notre Dame is in Paris and it's a cathedral. And the rose windows were very popular back in like the 1200s with Gothic architecture and stuff. So, and what makes it here, I'll pull this back over here. So if it just had these spokes in it, these lines, that would be called a wheel window. But because of like making them look kind of like little petals and it, the layers build and build and build, that's what makes it a rose window. And um, I don't know if you guys know, but last year on April 15th of 2019, uh, the cathedral actually caught fire, but they were able to save the rose window. And there's actually three rose windows and all three of them are different. And if you're looking at the recording, um, you'll see um, the actual picture. And if you're watching it live with us, I'm gonna screen share and show you the, the actual picture. But these black lines, what makes the black lines in the window, it's actually stone. And the window itself is 30 feet wide. So these are, we're talking huge, huge windows. All right, so I've got all my circles in various sizes. You can draw in pencil if you want to, especially if you're using like mom's good dishes or bowls or something. You don't want Sharpie on the side of the bowls and dishes. I'm not gonna use pencil because I want you guys to be able to see really clearly what I'm drawing. So we're gonna start with our biggest circle first. And the reason we're gonna start with our biggest circle first is because we wanna be able to see where we're putting those little circles inside the big circle. Otherwise we might get them um, off center from what we're doing. So you want to kind of try and make sure it's in the center. And if it's not dead center, it's okay. It does not have to be perfect because this is our own creation. It's not like we're going to hang it up in the cathedral here. Let's see, my line's got a little crooked. I'm just going to go back and try and make them connect a little bit there. All right. Here's my next circle, and you can see I got some Girl Scout stickers on it. If Coco Puff is on here, she probably recognizes this lid. Because it came from something that her and her mom did. Alright. And then we've got a roll of tape. Rolls of tape are really good because this is going to give me two circles in one. Because I'm going to draw the inside, but I'm also going to draw the outside. So this is going to give me two circles. So see, two for the price of one. I'm going to clean up my circles here really quick. Might not matter depending on our design. All right, and then here, there is another circle. And our last little itty bitty circle. Like the size of a penny. Ooh, this one's got ridges, so it's making it a little crazy. 
but that's okay. All right. We'll just go back and clean that up just a little bit. All right. So then let me bring our example back over. So now we've got all of our circles, and I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles is what I did. You don't have to do seven. You can do less. You can do more if your piece of uh, paper is bigger than mine. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw all of these lines with our ruler. So we're going to try our best and find the center. I'm going to say the center of mine is like right about there. We're going to take our ruler and we're going to go straight up and down first. And we're going to make like pieces of pie or slices of pizza, whichever is your favorite. Or if you like both, that's good too. Cake. We, we cut cake in pieces like this too, don't we? All right, so we've done up and down, left to right. Now we're gonna divide both of those in half and do our best anyways. One side might be a, bit, a little bit bigger than the other and that's okay if it is. So like I said, this is your own artwork. Oops, see, I went a little bit out, outside the lines. That's okay, we're not worried about that. All right, so I'm gonna pull our example back down. So, the, so now we've got this right here, and you can see how we made these into like little petals right here. So what I'm gonna do with my Sharpie is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna round this off, and then I'm gonna color in that part right there. So I'm gonna round this off. And I'm going to go through and round everybody off, and then I'm going to come back through and color. If it helps you to rotate your page, you can. Ooh, I think I rotated a little bit too much there. So now it kind of looks like we have a flower in the middle. And like I said, we're going to go through and we're going to darken up all of this around the outside if you don't have a black sharpie you can use you know um, a pencil for now and then go back over it in sharpie if you want to um, or go back over it in a like if you had crayola markers but you wouldn't want to use the crayola marker right now because or let me if, don't use crayola markers if you're going to use watercolor because the crayola markers are water soluble so they will pick up as well when you start using your watercolors if you're not going to use watercolors if you're just going to color your rose window in with crayons or um, colored pencils then by all means you could use a crayola marker so just keep that in mind okay so now we have this little middle part so now we're going to kind of do the same thing in this next section these into bigger like a bigger petal like I said I'm gonna go around all the way first this kind of reminds me of a daisy which is kind of cool since daisies are our youngest members of Girl Scouts. So now you can kind of see too why the rose window is called a rose window because it does, you know, it's starting to look like a flower here. we bring our back over you can see we've got the middle and then the next one okay oh, let me so now on this next one we're gonna go and make these kind of triangles but we're gonna round the point of the triangle so it's not such a sharp edge and again you can 
rotate your paper if that helps you. It helps me. Kind of making like a wavy line. Let's see, this section is way bigger than the other ones, but that's okay. So we have this part done. We're gonna get our ruler back out. And from where this point was, we are going to draw another line. And I'm gonna try and line both of them up point for point. That way I don't have to move my ruler around any more than I have to. Let's move that one just a smidge. Make it more on the point there. All right. So now We've got even more out here. So I'll bring my little example back over. So I'll try and put them side by side. So we've done the middle, middle petals, or the very center petals, and then the next layer, and then here's our next layer. And then now we're gonna start doing this. So we're gonna skip this one all together, okay? And we're gonna go out to this next one. And then this one, we can make them rounded again if we want to, which I think I'll make them rounded in this one just to see the difference from my, fir from my first example to something else. Move this out of your way so you can see better. And so I've never seen this window in person but I would love to go to Paris one day and see it in person because I think that would be really cool. But apparently each one of these little windows tells a story. And supposedly it's because people didn't read like, they, like we do today. Not everybody could read. And so these the pictures that were in the window told a certain story. And I believe all of the windows in the cathedral obviously tell a story that goes from the Bible. But I don't know which window tells what story. Oops, that one got a little bit cray cray there. Oops. Okay, so now see there's another layer. And let's see, for the next one, let's, let's do this, but let's do it in reverse. Let's make like little sad faces. Ooh, sorry, my doggy shook the table. As you can tell too, I'm sure you can see that my table looks very, very colorful and whatnot underneath me. We actually have paper underneath me protecting our table. So if you're doing this on the, your dining room table, mom might want you to do the same thing and put some paper under you. Just in case the Sharpie bleeds through your paper because that would be bad. Might make your table really pretty though. Have a rose window on your table. How interesting would that be? Alright, so now we've done a bunch of little frowny faces. 
Let's see. Do I want to color those in? Or do I want to leave them alone? I'm going to think about that while we do the next one. The next one I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw the, the wavy point. kind of looks like a sunshine. So anytime, like if you look at, you know, say you were to look at this and you might think, good grief, I'll never be able to draw that or paint that or, you know, anything like that. But once you break it down into all the little steps, which are a bunch of circles, a bunch of lines, and then now I'm making like happy faces and frowny faces and like triangles or petals, it doesn't end up being ooh, that hard. Because I've, I've looked at stuff before and thought that myself, like, I'll never be able to draw that. But then once it's broken down for you, it kind of gets a little bit easier. And the fun thing is then you get to use your creativity and your favorite colors and color this thing in. I think I'm going to leave it like that and then I'm going to start my watercolors from here. So I'm going to put my Sharpie down. Now I've got my water. Put my ruler out of the way and my rest of my circles because I don't need those anymore. Let's get my watercolor palette down here. I like to use I guess a medium-sized brush. Let's see, does this one, this says it's a six. I don't know if y'all have numbers on them or not. Or, ooh, I just tore mine off. Hello. Um, but this, this is, this tends to be my favorite for stuff like this. I might go to this little one, which is a two, um, for maybe, you know, in some of these other things, but probably not just because there's already black down there. So it's not like it's going to mess anything up. So let's see. And like I said, you get to use your own creativity here, and you can color yours in any way you want to. I'm going to make the middle of this one yellow, just to be different, because my first one was pink. And then you'll see, like as I'm going over right now, you can see where I'm coloring outside of the lines. I know, big faux pas, right? can't believe that Starbella would color outside of the lines. But the good thing about this is um, when you're done, you can come back over with that black Sharpie and fill and, you know, color back over it, and then it disappears again. But sometimes it's kind of hard to get in those little spaces. All right, let's see. What color do we want to go? Let's go to a dark blue. And again, you see, I'm just going straight over because like I said, we can come back in after our thing has dried and go back over with the Sharpie and you'll never be able to tell you went outside the lines. How cool is that? All right, so we've got some yellow and some blue. Now I think we need a brighter color. Let's go for a pink. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to stay away from the center this time. I'm going to add this pink right here. The reason I'm going to stay away from that center part for the moment is just so it can dry. And 
And like I said, if you don't have watercolor paints at your house, you can always do this in colored pencil or crayons or markers or gel pens, any, uh, oil pastels, any kind of whatever thing you have at your house to do this with. don't have to use the same materials that Starbella is using. You also don't have to use the same colors that Starbella is using. Because what if your favorite color is purple? Or your favorite color is blue? You can use your favorite colors and make your own pretty piece of art. And you can share it with a friend. too much water in it so Starbella stayed away from it for a second so she can go back and pick it up with her paintbrush and use it over here. Again, you can go over the lines after it dries if you want to. That's what I did on my example because it really made the lines pop again because um, some of these are kind of opaque and it dulled the black lines, but you might like the way that looks too. You might like them looking not so bold. All right, so we've got that. And so you just keep on painting until your painting's all done. Missed a little corner right there, so we'll just do that real quick. Let's see. I think I'm going to put an orange. Let's try this orange. We'll put that one right here. Again, you can rotate your picture if you need to. I'm going to paint one more section with you, and then I'm going to let you go off on your own and you finish your painting. And then I want you to come back and share it with us. We're going to have a Google Drive set up. And your moms and dads can take pictures of your artwork and submit them. They, they, you can either be holding it or they can just take a picture of you. Whichever um, works best for you guys. I think we need a pretty green. As you can tell, this is one of our favorite greens because it's very low. I'm going to put it right here under this pink.
The other thing you can do, I'll show you this really quick, is you can blend your colors. So see this one in mine right here is like kind of ombre where it's blue and then purple and then pink and then I did the reverse, blue, purple, and pink and you know you can see how it went around. So we can do that kind of type deal. Let's find a, let's get a little bit of purple and we're gonna go through and put it at the tips of each of these and then we're gonna come back and kind of work it in a little bit. Just give another dimension to our painting here. half full, half empty type things. Oops, I got some in my green there. That's the cool thing about watercolors too, is you kind of just fix your mistakes like that. You can kind of see where my purple started and I've ombre it into my pink. Oh, well, I got into my green again. if you make funny noises too like that when you're painting. I just made Narwhal sad for saying that. She's my camera woman. She's like, oh my goodness, mom, you're being <laughs> so embarrassing. Now you can hear her giggling at me. See that just that just gave those little petals just a little something more. Went outside of the lines there for a second, but that's okay. Hopefully, when we go in with that whatever color we end up putting up there, so that made that look kind of cool. All right, I'm going to do this last little section here in the middle. And then I will leave you to do the outside, and I'll do my outside, and it'll be at the end of the video, because we'll come back and show you. And then I'll probably let mine dry overnight, and then do my Sharpies. Like, I'll go back over the lines, and then I'll have a finalized picture for you at the end so you can see what it looks like before I add the sharpie and after that way you can make your mind up whether you want to put your sharpie on yours or not I think that sounds like a good idea guys guys so there's my rose window so far you can see especially in the middle where I put that yellow how much how opaque it is and it's covering up where I put the black sharpie so I'm definitely gonna go over that but um, I'll let you guys finish up and I'm gonna finish up and then I'll join back with you and uh, you'll get to see my finished product before and after I do the sharpie have a great time guys and I'll see you next time hey guys welcome back so what I did was I went through and I watercolored this in black and I did this one purple, 
Um, I did this yellow, and then in the tips, I put orange in and then kind of feathered it out so that it would kind of ombre. And then I used my little paintbrush and I put blue here and green here. And so you can see how opaque and stuff the watercolor is. So when you see, I'm gonna let it dry. And then when you see it again, I will have gone over all the lines and you'll see the design pop like it does in my original example. So there you can kind of see a side by side of how it, one pops and one doesn't. All right. So we'll see you later, guys. All right, guys, so I've gone through and I went back through and I outlined all of my design again. And I've got all my sharp little lines now again so you can see the difference from the before I traced them all again and then after. And the last thing that you need to do to your artwork is you need to sign, uh-oh, there we go, sign and date it. So Starbella. And today's date is actually 6-10. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.